it's a heavy thing, man. And in HR, we are so trained and it's so best practices for us to manage it. Just manage that process, manage that situation. I don't think y'all understand how heavy it is when we're done with that process. It's, it's deep. All hey right, y'all, this is Tamika, the face behind Hey HR. And today we're gonna talk all about some 2023 law updates. I really don't feel like I'm really talking about as many specific laws in this situation as I want you to know what things laws have been created from. Because there are tons of laws that have been created on so many different things, but if you just know like the stemming cause, then you can literally like connect the dots, right? And now one thing that I really, really want you guys to know is that in order to just understand these three big laws that I'm going to talk about, you must first understand current regula regulations. So there's so many regulations that have added on like addendums or manipulations to those additional regulations or just change those regulations. So you got to understand current regulations and you need to understand reporting requirements because there's tons of reporting specifically in California that is just changing or that has required additional information, additional data. And then the the impact of recent court rulings. So I tell you guys all the time to get recertification credits. I attend different breakfast briefings with local employment law attorneys offices. Not only have I just found a wealth of information from those because it just I just think that if you want to really really know like twists and turns in HR and relate that back to the law, look at employment law attorneys see so many different things. From those court rulings it tells you the best practices because the court has decided on this situation that this is how this goes. This tells you kind of how you should do it in your organization to avoid being at the court level right one thing that you definitely want to know is that with these changes you primarily want to adjust your policies and your procedures and inform your team your team doesn't mean just your managers but it also mean your HR professionals your c-suite staff on ways to avoid being caught off guard for any of these situations or any of the, of the ways that these situations can arise this video really varies largely on your industry, your company size, and your location. Those three things really tells you if these are gonna hit your departments or not. So if you guys wanna know more about my employment law updates for 2023, definitely keep watching. All right, so the three biggest laws that we're gonna talk about, and this one isn't necessarily a law. Remember at the beginning of the video, I told you that you have to understand like your current regula regulations and things that's going on, right? Is layoffs. There are tons of different things that are required to go with these layoffs. We're also going to talk about pay transparency. It's huge. You need to know about it. And the next thing is going to be like a list of California laws that have been changed. So I'm in South Carolina. I don't know them very well. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of some of them. Definitely not all. Um, but the biggest thing I wanted to do with this video is to make sure that you guys know that this is only the start of two different series of videos. So in the month of February, the series of videos that we will go over is going to be layoffs. I'm hitting the layoffs heavy. One video is gonna be called layoff trends. So I talk about the trends with layoffs, what you can normally see happening with layoffs. Another thing will be how to indicate layoff on your resume. If you've ever been laid off, like how do I put that on my resume? What do I say? What do I do? How do I, you know, not make that look bad for me? The next thing is how you can predict layoffs. So predicting layoffs is another video. Hiring freezes versus layoffs. How do they work together? How do they work different? Why do they, do they always, like those two terms come up together? And then how is HR involved in layoffs? rehiring after layoffs. So if your company has had layoffs, how do you go about or what do you look for before you start rehiring because you've lost all the staff, right? Things starting to go better. We're gonna have a video series on that. And then we're also gonna have a video series on pay transparencies. And I think I only have like three videos for pay transparency, but the biggest thing in addition to that, if you don't wanna wait on like these long form videos is that I have a pay transparency blog on my website. So definitely go to heyhr.com. Go to the blog section. The latest blog is all about pay transparency. But these are the big three laws we're going to talk about for 2023. So let's head on California law stuff since that's just going to be brief us. Some of the changes within California law is the AB 152 supplemental paid sick leave. So it's a COVID related law. And so there's been an extension from it from September 2022 to December 31st, 2022. But of course, you and whenever you have an extension or something, there's some, some updates you always need to know. So definitely pay attention to the supplemental paid, leave, paid sick leave because in some instances, 
people are still getting supplemental time. And then the next thing is going to be wage garnishments. Remember, y'all, this is all for folks in California. So in California, there's some wage garnishments that limits the amount that can be garnished. And that started is going to start in September 2023. So there's some things that you need to get prepared for with that. Not only do you need your HR team to know, not only do you need to kind of create policies for that, but you also need to make sure that your payroll system and your payroll department can manage that as well. Because there's some changes in your system that needs to be changed. Otherwise, you're doing it manually. And then there's a minimum wage increase. In the state of California, the minimum wage increased this year to $15.50 per hour. You know what I'm saying? If y'all making less than $15.50, y'all might well move to California. Just saying. You know what I'm saying? Or take a job that's remote but based in California. Anyhow, the next thing is bereavement leave. Again, this is for California. This type of leave is required after January 1, 2023. So now it's not like a luxury to give bereavement leave. It's a requirement in California that they must have bereavement leave. The next thing is your civil rights reporting. So there's an expansion to the data that's being reported. And so you definitely want to pay attention to that. Y'all, this is not the whole list of different ones. So what I will do is put the link to a couple of resources that I found in the description box so you guys can check out those links for California law. I'm a South Carolina girl. I probably, my plan is to never move to California. So I don't have to deal with the HR. <laughs> It's too much. California and New York is just too much for me. So now let's talk about layoffs. Layoffs has been very, very, it's been a touchy word. It's been a touchy word. And at the time that I'm recording this video, the last layoff that I know about in the tech industry, because the tech industry is really being hit hard by these layoffs right now. The most recent layoff that I'm aware of is Google laying off 12,000 US employees. That's a lot of people with no jobs. That's a lot of people. It really hits me hard. And so for those of you who are not in the U.S., I don't think you understand the impact of layoffs when it happens in the U.S. So many different cultures are just different. Here in the U.S., it's just me, my daughter, and my dog in this house. I'm the only adult. I pay all of the bills, every responsibility, anything goes wrong. I'm here to fix it. Anything that needs to be maintained, I do it. When my income is drastically affected, a lot can be at stake. So I think that that's the biggest thing other countries don't understand because in so many other countries, there's layers of generations that live in one home. In the U.S., there's primarily one generation and they're primarily living off of one, maybe two incomes. And in the U.S., let's just be real, we are bad at budgeting. We're bad at financial literacy. We just, we suck at it. We want it, we buy it, we get it, we go get credit cards, we max them out, we just keep living, we get a ton of student debt that really causes us a problem when we get in situations like layoffs. So anyhow, I'm not gonna beat up people who got laid off because layoffs are huge. According to layoffs.fyi, which I think is a great little database about layoffs, as of January 21st, 2023, 166 companies did layoffs in the tech industry alone. It affected 55,863 employees in varying countries and states. That's a lot of people without jobs. So just get ready, y'all, because I already told y'all all of the videos that I'm going to do, where we're going to do a deep dive into layoffs. And in those videos, it's going to kind of get your mind prepared because you have so many different moving pieces that you really need to make sure that you're comfortable with the not only the past laws, but 2023 laws. Every country doesn't have the same process with layoffs. Some companies, some industries, some protected employees, some countries, like they really require that there's a notice period. If you guys pay attention, a lot of these companies are finding ways to wiggle around those notice periods. And so I want y'all to be fully educated. So we're going to talk about layoffs more because if I keep talking about it, it just makes my heart heavy because prior to working in HR, I've been laid off twice. And since working in, layoff, in HR, I've been the HR employee for two different layoffs. Either way ain't easy. I think so many times employees assume that it's easy for HR. Ain't never easy. easy. It's a hard day. It's a hard, hard day. Now, I'm not a doctor and I'm not an ER doctor, but I think it's very, very close when you send that person that came in with this emergency issue home with a lifelong disease that they didn't know they had and they have a limited time to live. Or someone gets into a car accident and it's just as heavy, in my opinion, as explaining to that family member that that person's no longer with you, like you couldn't save them. It's a heavy thing, man. And in HR, we are so trained and it's so best practices for us to manage it, just manage that process, manage that situation. I don't think y'all understand how heavy it is when we're done with that process. It's, it's deep. 
All right, let's talk about pay transparency. Pay transparency includes wages, overtime pay, allowances, shift differentials, bonuses, commissions, vacation and holiday pay, insurance, and benefits, stock, profit sharing, and so many different things. Y'all do not get twisted that this pay transparency that you're seeing coming out is only limited to your base salary or how much you're taking home on an annual basis. And so to break down the definition a little bit here to help you guys out with pay transparency, pay transparency is defined as the practice of openly and proactively sharing information on organizational comp practices, including pay rates for specific positions, pay increases, bonuses, commission structures, benefits, retirement plans, and any other specifics about pay. I'm so happy that we're coming out with these pay transparencies laws. I'm so happy that so many states are starting to put them in place. It makes work just transparent, right? Let's stop talking about the big elephant in the room, which is the pay, and let's just talk about the work. Like, how can we get the work done? States are required to show salary ranges on job postings, and those states right now that are legally required to do that is California, Cincinnati, Ohio, Toledo, Ohio, Colorado, Connecticut, Maryland, Nevada, New York City, Rhode Island, and Washington State. And so, guys... I don't feel like I went through and did like a 2023 really law updates because I get a little annoyed watching either like replays of webinars or watching like attorneys who sound like we're in a lecture room or I just feel like I'm being instructed to. So I wanted to give you guys these three frameworks of law updates like kind of in an overall casual view. And so first we talked about California law and those different changes that's going on with California law. We didn't talk about all of them. We didn't talk about them in detail, but you definitely will check the description box for the link there that gives you more resources. And then we talked about layoff. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a law with layoffs, but there's a lot of laws that intertwine with that process. Even before you decide you're laying employees off, before you identify which employees it is, there are a lot of things that go in place for that. And then we also talked about pay transparency. You guys have seen so many of the minority group. These things aren't coming out just because they are new ideas that people are thinking about. No, there are new laws that are coming in place. These laws took forever to get through the legal channels. And so I'm so happy to see that now they're really hitting the streets where they're protecting employees. So um, if you guys want any more details on 2023 law updates, maybe I didn't catch everything, then let me know in the description box and I can definitely do another video where we just add on more law updates because I really wanted it to be lighthearted and I definitely want to get you guys prepared for more details that we'll get in series of videos because with all of those different videos, I definitely don't want to sit here and do like an hour long video on a topic. I want to break it down for you so that you can absorb it better so you can take that information a little bit easier. So for those of you who are new here, I hope that you found value in this video because I really tried to go at a different approach with giving you the law updates. For those of you who are returning, just get ready, honey. We in for another series and another series. These series are really, really helpful. I think that it really, really helps us build the information that we need to know. Every time I've done a series, you guys have enjoyed them. I think the only series that didn't do well is when I talked about HR for entrepreneurs. Beyond that, you guys love these series. If you don't want to miss a beat, please make sure to subscribe. I thank you all for so much for watching, and I just cannot wait to see y'all on the next video.